Hello ladies and gentlemen, Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we are talking about Android Studio. I don't think I've ever talked about this on this channel, which is kind of confusing because this is a completely free uh, IDE for developing Android applications made available by Google. This actually replaced Eclipse as the tool chain of choice for making Android applications. On top of that, Android Studio 3.6, I believe is the version number, was just released. So towards the latter half of this video, we're going to look at what's new in 3.6. But first, we're going to do a quick overview of Android Studio. Studio. So what you see in front of you, this is Android Studio. It's actually a bit of a misnomer uh, because as you will see, I can come up here, go to run, notice my edit. If I go to edit configurations right here, uh, I have this unnamed one and this is a desktop configuration. This is a libgdx, uh, the starter application for libgdx. And we go ahead and we run that, you will see Boom. So you can do desktop applications on here. But at the same time, obviously, the number one reason for using this guy is for Android development. So here I'm going to switch back over to the Android app right here. All right. So that's the guy. Select that. So we're going to go ahead and we'll do a run, run Android. And the, the way you're going to mostly use this guy is for doing Android development. So this is actually the replacement for Eclipse tool chain. Before it used to be, you used to use something called Android ADT, ADT, the Eclipse operating system, and so on. So if you wanted to do any kind of development, this is how it was done. Huh, we just crashed for some reason. Not going to get into debugging why, but as you can see, we've got a full uh, emulator right here. You've got controls over uh, how it's run. You can configure what kind of device it is. You have um, the Android SDK manager built in here so you can have various different Android versions. Uh, by default, it ships with uh, Android 10. Uh, this is Android 9 that I installed back on it. By the way, if you are going to be working uh, with something like LibGDX, you're also going to want to install the Android tools. So when it tells you that it can't find the Android SDK, it actually can't find the Android SDK tools which aren't installed by default. Now, if you've never seen this before, uh, it looks really daunting but if you have seen this before, it probably looks really familiar. And that's because Android Studio is actually built on top of uh, JetBrains IntelliJ uh, Community Edition Java IDE. And the cool thing about that is you get access to a number of different plugins. So coming here into settings, you'll notice if we go down, uh, we've got a ton of different plugins here. So if you want to have more of a Vim setup, you've got that option here. You've got uh, advanced Android tools. If you want to do Flutter development, you can install Flutter stuff here. If you want to develop in Scala or various different other uh, Java-based language or JVM-based languages. There's stuff there for you. There's Markdown plugins. There is an absolute ton of plugins for extending this. And if you switch over to the full fat IntelliJ from JetBrains, you get even more plugins available. As you can also see from down here, it's also got Kotlin available out of the box. Kotlin is there, or, or JetBrains um, JVM powered uh, language. It, it's it's actually a really nice programming language. It's one of those ones that I want to get my hands on a lot, a uh, lot more. Uh, on top of that, again, you automatically get all of the typical uh, analyzation stuff and refactoring tools that uh, JetBrains is known for. These are the same guys that make ReSharper and a bunch of other tools like that. So they got some of the best refactoring, uh, refactoring and analysis tools on the market. On top of that, Android has built, or Google have built a number of Android tools in here as well. So for example, they've got a layout or widget tool. So if you want to come in here and make... Um, UIs for Android devices. We've got the tooling to do that. So you see here, you got the various different profiles for you know all the various different Pixel devices and so on, uh, tablets and so on, fo so forth. Also, when it comes down to creating projects, well, so by the way, this is straight out drag and drop style editor. I'm not going to do so now, but you see you've got various different widgets and controls to work with. So text box labels, so on. You literally just drag and drop them in WYSIWYG create your layout and you can basically save that layout and be good to go. So you've got these additional tools built in on top of that. You saw earlier we already have the, uh, the emulator built in out of the box. So it's it, probably the premier environment if you're developing primarily for the Android platform or if you're doing Java application development and Android. Now on top of that, they've got a number of different built-in projects. I actually imported this one this to get this to work, the desktop project. This is actually an imported Gradle project and it's got support for importing a number of different options. But at the same time, if we go down here to create a new project, you're gonna see out of the box, we get a number of templates for things like phone and tablet, Wear OS for the six people that still have that, uh, Android TV, 
I, I was going to make a joke about for the six people that have that, but I actually have uh, an NVIDIA Shield and I absolutely love it. So uh, I do wish that Android TV was more popular because it's great. Uh, automotive and Android things. So you've got a number of the, all of the basic Android ecosystem projects. They're here out of the box with like a kind of um, walkthrough wizard sort of approach to getting started. And that's, that's basically it. That's... Um, that's Android Studio. And again, if you're familiar with any of the JetBrains IDEs, this will be, uh, it's the same thing. It's the same process. And the cool thing is once you learn this, uh, you can go to any of their other tools. You can go to PHP Storm or WebStorm or Sea Lion or Project Rider or various different other tools, and you're gonna be immediately at home. Um, it's a really nice one for doing presentations. It, it has a really good look to it. There is a presentation mode available, so you can actually just uh, zoom in things full screen. It, it's, it's nice that way. It's got integrated debugging. Again, all the refactoring tools you're going to expect out of modern IDE. And then once again, once you learn this workflow, there is an IDE for every single language on every single platform, uh, thanks to the whole JetBrains ecosystem. And then you have the the Android workflow kind of built into here. And then we've got things like uh, the AV Day, AVD Manager, which is your virtual desktop. So if you want to bring in a different virtual device, you can create it right here. So if you want to emulate in your emulator, you want to have a number of different options, uh, you can create them right here. So if I want to simulate a Pixel 3 XL, you boom, create it there. You can set the amount of memory. Or if you want to emulate, you know, Wear OS or a tablet or whatever, you can create new virtual devices here through the AVD manager. And then the other one that is noticeable here is the SDK manager. There are a ton of different versions of Android out there right now. If they bring out a new SDK or you wanna check something out or if we wanna check out Android R, just click in here, it will go ahead and download it for you, manage the various different pieces. Now what I was mentioning earlier on, so say you're running Android Pi, if you wanna run with libgdx though, you're also going to want to come in here and go to Android SDK tools. I just mentioned that because I know a lot of you are into game development and libgdx is a great Java based uh, 2D game framework. So if you're going to be checking it out, there's a good chance that's something you're interested in. When it tells you it can't find the Android SDK when you try to do things, it's actually missing the Android SDK tools, which aren't installed out of the box. All right, so that is it. That is Android Studio. So as you saw from here, we can easily create a desktop uh, profile and use it to run things other than just Android desktop. So don't don't get put off by the name too much. If you just want to do Java development in general, it's a great platform for it. And then again, all of the uh, Google tools are built in here to make your life even easier. So this is probably the best place if you are a primarily an Android developer to get started. Also on that topic, the whole NDK or the C++ tool chain is also supported out of the box from Android now. All right, so let's move on over. Again, if you want to learn a little bit more about it, uh, the webpage is available here. It's available at developer.android.com. Uh, forward slash studio and they got a bit of a rundown of the features that are here intelligent code editor fast rich emulator uh, templates uh, so on and so forth you know pretty much so again c++ ndk support uh, fire cloud and firebase and cloud database support the layout editor we saw very briefly and so on tools for creating apks for android everything you would expect for a full Android build environment, it is there. Now, specifically, what was just released is 3.6. This was literally released uh, today or, or late last night, depending on when I get this video out. Um, major release includes a variety of new features and improvements, design tools. So we got split view and zoom in for the design editors. Uh, we've got a color picker resource tab. We've got resource manager contains the following updates. Resource manager now supports the most resource types. Uh, when searching for a resource, resource manager now displays results from all project modules. Uh, and so on, updates to the Android Gradle plugin. Again, Gradle is what I used to make that whole um, libgdx project import in the first place. Um, Deobfuscates class and method bytecode and APK analyzer. Uh, Kotlin support was added, uh, so that's definitely nice. Also, oh, Kotlin support was improved, sorry. Once again, Kotlin is a uh, custom programming language created by um, JetBrains that runs on the JVM, or at least it can be made to run on the JVM. Um, you get attach Kotlin only APK sources, leak detection in memory, uh, profiler, uh, emulators, improved location support, uh, support for Google Maps stuff. Uh, yeah, so a lot of improvements there. Multi-display, uh, Android emulator now allows you to deploy your app to multiple displays, which supports customizable dimensions and helps you to test app that supports multi-window and multi-display. Obviously, this is where we are going in the future. So things like the new 
Oh, what the hell is it called? It's not the Courier. Whatever Microsoft's new flip foldable thing, journal, or I don't remember what it's called. Oh, it might be Surface X. No, that's not it. Anyways, that new flip open form factor from Microsoft that's going to have double screens. Uh, there's a few other devices going that route instead of the foldable approach. And then, of course, we've got a lot of devices now like the... Uh, say the uh, Motorola Razr where you've got a screen on the back and a screen on the front. Well, that's what this support will now handle. Uh, new project templates. Um, Win32 has been deprecated. Uh, so there's no more updates for the 32-bit version of Android Studio after December 2019. So again, that's mostly just impacting people back on Windows 7 at this date and age. Not a lot of uh, people out there still rocking the uh, uh, the 32-bit versions. Uh, IntelliJ ID tw uh, IDEA 2019 core support. So once again, I told you uh, Android Studio is built on top of IntelliJ. Uh, so they've um, come up imperative with the 2019.2 release here. And we got some known issues. So basically that is it. That is a quick overview of Android Studio. Um, and of course, uh, a bit of an overview of what is new in the 3.6 release. It's a great IDE, and frankly, if you've never checked out any of JetBrains stuff, they're all great IDEs. Once you learn them, uh, it's just excellent. The, the one that I use most often is WebStorm for all of my JavaScript development, and they just build so many great tools in there. Uh, I do highly recommend, if you've never checked out any of those things, while well, Android Studio is a nice introduction to it, and if you find yourself thinking, oh, I'd love to use this, but instead I'd rather work with X programming language, well, there's a possibility you can add language support via uh, the plugin system, or you can just head on over to IntelliJ, and I guarantee you they've got an IDE for that language. So anyways, do you use Android Studio? If so, what do you think of it? What do you think of this update? What do you think of the Android ecosystem in general? Let me know all of these things in the comments down below, and I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.